study of how sounds are organised and used in languages. A phonological system of a language includes an inventory of sounds and their features and rules that specify how sounds interact with each other. Phonology is just one of several aspects of language. It's related to other aspects such as phonetics, morphology, syntax and pragmatics. We have already covered an introduction to phonetics and here you can see the basic differences between phonetics and phonology. So phonetics is the basis for phonological analysis, whereas phonology is the basis for further work in morphology, syntax, discourse and orthography design. Phonetics analyzes the production of all human speech sounds, regardless of language, whereas phonology analyzes the sound patterns of a particular language by determining which phonetic sounds are significant and explaining how these sounds are interpreted by the native speaker. The goal for us here is to give you a basic understanding of the principles of phonology. If you eventually become the primary person developing a writing system in an unwritten language, it would be helpful for you to do further study at that time with that particular language in focus. At the end of our phonology introduction here, you will understand what phonology is and you'll understand more about how languages work. Every language has a set of sounds that function as distinct sounds and can distinguish meaning. These are called phonemes. For example, in English, p and b are functionally separate. They're distinct sounds that can indicate a different meaning when either one or the other is used. We can see they distinguish meaning because pack and back are two separate words with separate meanings. So are cap and cab, or lap and lab. The only way we can tell these pairs of words apart is by the sounds p and b, so we call this a minimal pair. A minimal pair is two words that differ in only one sound. In the Kashunahua language from Peru, um, a minimal pair is the two words taka, which means liver, and daka to rest, because the only sounds that differ are t and d. But there are some separate sounds in English that are not phonemes, like p and p, an aspirated p. These are distinctly different sounds, but they're not functionally separate in English because they don't distinguish meaning. We can use either one in a word and the meaning doesn't change. Pack and pack would both be heard as ways of saying pack. In some other languages, these same two sounds do distinguish meaning. So we say that in English, p and b contrast, but that p and p don't contrast. For sounds to contrast, they need to be separate sounds and they also need to distinguish meaning. English has a set of sounds that contrast, but other languages have different contrasts. In Arta, er and ul don't contrast, so they are not functionally separate. You can say yalugu or yarugu and it is the same word with the same meaning. In Walpiri, p and b don't contrast, so they are not functionally separate. You could say walpiri or walbiri. In Thai, p and p do contrast, so they are functionally separate. Pa means forest and pa means split. They're separate words, they're a minimal pair. In English, p and b are separate phonemes, but p and p are not. In Arta, er and ul are not separate phonemes, and in Walpiri, p and b are not separate phonemes. In Thai, p and p are separate phonemes. Now notice here that when we write the symbols for sounds or phones, we write them between brackets, um, like this. Um, but when we write the symbols for phonemes, we write them between slashes. Every language has a set of phonemes or a phoneme inventory. This is simply the set of functionally distinct sounds of the language. Languages differ from each other in which possible speech sounds they use, and many languages have sounds that aren't used in English, 
for example, clicks or vela fricatives and so on. And English also has some sounds that are rare in other languages, like our affricates, ch in church and j in judge, and dental fricatives like th in thick and th in this. But languages also differ in how many phonemes they have. English has 44 phonemes. Rotokas from Bougainville and Mura from Brazil each have 11 phonemes. Rotokas has six consonants and five vowels and Mura has, um, has eight consonants and three vowels. And you can also see here that this Khoisan language of Southern Africa has 141 distinct phonemes, 95 consonants, including 48 different clicks, 24 simple vowels and 22 diphthongs. The way we find the phoneme inventory of a language is by studying the way sounds are used and organised, phonology. The concepts of contrast and complementary distribution are central to phonology, the analysis of sounds. We mentioned contrast already and said that when sounds are functionally different, they're said to contrast. So let's look at some more examples of contrast in English. Pack versus back. Pack and back have quite different meanings, but the only difference between these two words is that one begins with p and the other with b. These two sounds therefore contrast in English. This means they're functionally separate sounds or separate phonemes in English. Pack and back are therefore a minimal pair for p and b because they demonstrate that p and b are separate phonemes. They might not be in some other languages, but they are in English. In the same way, we can see that t and d are separate phonemes in English, and so are k and g, because we can find minimal pairs for these sounds also. We have tie versus die, and grab versus crab. With each pair, the only difference between them is voicing. One is voiced, and the other is voiceless. So we can see that the feature of voicing is distinctive in English, at least for plosives. Adding voicing to one sound in a word can change the meaning. If we look at some other sounds, it turns out that voicing is distinctive for affricates and fricatives too. So we have chore versus jaw, thigh versus thy, sap and zap, fat and vat, and also meshes and measures. In the same way that voicing is distinctive in English, the feature of nasalisation is also contrastive in English. So let's look at these examples. We have ban and man, debt and net, log and long. These minimal pairs show that m and b are separate phonemes, so are n and d and m and g. Now, as we said, English has 44 phonemes, but it actually has at least 51 different speech sounds. That is because some different speech sounds are not functionally separate. In other words, switching them won't distinguish meaning. We used the example before of p and p, which are phonetically different speech sounds and both occur in English, but they don't make a difference for meaning in English. Because they are not functionally separate, we say they are functionally part of a single phoneme. These sounds that are part of one phoneme are called olophones of one phoneme. Usually, olophones occur in different contexts or environments. So let's look at some examples. So in English, p and p are olophones of a single phoneme. So we have person, paternal and computer, also spot, conspire, stupid, and sleep. It's the same phoneme, but we could say that it changes depending on the environment that it's in. So notice in the examples here that we get p as the first sound in the first syllable of a word and as the first sound in a syllable that isn't first but is stressed. P occurs everywhere else, so the end of a syllable and the beginning of a syllable after s, um, as the first sound in an unstressed syllable, which is not the first syllable in a word.
So in English, the three sounds p, p and b divide up into phonemes like this. The letter p represents p and p and the letter b represents the phone b. The natural reaction of a native English speaker is to say, okay, but so what? Of course, they're just different ways of saying P. But that just means it seems natural to English speakers that P and P are just different ways of saying what is functionally a single phoneme. Unlike P and B, where, of where they of course seem like functionally different sounds. But that only seems natural because we are English speakers. There's nothing about these three sounds that inherently make them divide up that way. That's just how it works in English. Korean also has the three sounds, p, p and b. But in Korean, p and p make a difference for meaning. So we have pul meaning fire and pul meaning grass. So p and p are separate phonemes in Korean. But also in Korean, p and b belong together. So pup means law and mubup means lawlessness. So in Korean, the three sounds p, p and b divide up into phonemes like this. The aspirated p represents the sound p and p represents both the p sound and the b sound. In Thai, it's a different story again. Thai also has the three sounds, p, p and b. But in Thai, all three make a difference for meaning. So pa means fire, pa means grass, and ba means shoulder. So all three are separate phonemes in Thai, and the three sounds divide up into phonemes like this. <laughs>